Gormagat, uh, and good morning, Minister. And also just to thank the people for profit for bringing forward this very important uh, motion this morning. I think it's very, very timely and very topical in light of the budget next week. Uh, I'm going to focus my, my contribution this morning on, on the concept of energy security, both at a, at a macro national level, but also and perhaps most importantly at, at a micro household individual level as well. I think we can all appreciate that there's a, a massive energy crunch out there at the moment uh, for two reasons primarily. First of all, the, the world economy is just cranking up again after being asleep for the last 12 months and that's pissing huge demands uh, on the limited supply that's there. But secondly, and perhaps most importantly, there's a lot of geopolitical games being played out at the moment. Um, a lot of strategic rivals and competitors are turning down gas valves and trying to apply a massive amount of pressure uh, onto their competitors. So unfortunately, it's, it's landed Ireland in the crosshairs as well. Um, one point that's rarely mentioned though is Energy price inflation generally leads very quickly to general inflation as well. So I think the most vulnerable people in the country are soon going to be hit with a double whammy. Yes, energy inflation is going to happen, but inflation of food prices and staple foods, etc., are going to rise as well, which is going to cause a, a major uh, significant effect as well. Um, just from Ireland's point of view, I think we're uniquely vulnerable here, um, primarily from a geographical location, that we are at the very, very end of a very long pipeline from Eastern Europe. Also, I think most people accept that our housing stock is very poorly insulated, which is an area we have to certainly have to work for. Um, our public transport is poorly developed, and we have an over-reliance on fossil fuels, and consequently, uh, our, uh, simultaneously, and, and perhaps even paradoxically, while we have an over-reliance on fossil fuels, we have an under-accessibility uh, issue from, from, from a fossil fuels point of view as well, which, which is a, a kind of a, a perfect storm from an energy uh, perspective. I think also we've, we've closed down a number of power plants uh, in the last 12 months, and I would argue perhaps prematurely that Plan B wasn't in place before Plan A was shut down. I'm in favour of absolutely the, the just transition, but it has to be done in a very measured and a very uh, focused and a very implementable way as well. Um, just the last point I'd like to make is there are things from an energy crunch point of view that are beyond our control, but there's also things that are, are within our control. We should be focusing on them, and primarily the budget next week. I agree with uh, Deputy Sherlock in the concept of tax credits. I think it's a good way to go, that we have some measures in the budget to offset the rise in energy prices. And if that's not possible, I think we should look at the carbon taxes and, and suspend the rise or the planned rise in carbon taxes until at least after the winter has passed. I think greater investment in public transport. I was happy to see that in the National Development Plan uh, on Monday. And more funding for the SEI to facilitate and encourage people to retrofit their homes. You can retrofit your homes in, in, in a couple of weeks, um, and I think if we get ahead of this now, it'll actually have a positive impact even this winter. The, the last thing I think we can look at doing is, is definitely look at micro-generation of power. I know the Green Party have been mentioning this for the last number of years, um, but I think we really need to look at the democratization of energy, and that's a good way to go. I mean, every Every roof, every south-facing roof in Ireland now should have solar panels either for heat or for, for electricity. And I know uh, Deputy Kenny and myself would obviously speak a lot to the, to the members of the agricultural community. There's a lot of spare roof space and sheds and in buildings and farms, and I think it's a good way to go. But there still isn't th that ability. You can, you can obviously pass surplus power to the grid, but you can't properly be paid for it yet. So that is an issue. And just the last point I'd like to raise, Minister, is uh, it's a little bit unusual that you can very easily put up solar panels in your house but without planning permission. But if you're a school or a public building or a swimming pool or a sports centre, you need planning permission. And I'd be grateful if you could look at the bureaucracy associated with that and make it more easy to uh, put up solar panels. Thank you very much.